As Bethany slammed his bedroom door, Owen sighed and started to go after her. This wasn't how things were supposed to go. How was he going to be best friends with Kiel Nomenfoot now? Would anyone even know that he was the one who would save the Magister if his whole life-saving scene hadn't made it into the book? Plus, what about Narnia? And then there was that other small issue of, well, Bethany being hurt. Not just irritated or annoyed, but actually hurt by what he had done. And that gave Owen a heavy feeling in the back of his shoulders, like when his mother wasn't mad, just disappointed. Stupid guilt. Bethany, he tried to shout after her, but for some odd reason, his lips didn't move, and all that came out was a weird sort of... Uh... Why couldn't he move his lips? He tried to bring his hands up to touch his mouth, but now his hands decided to play the same lip game and not move either. Arms, legs, toes, nothing worked. And that's when Owen noticed that his bedroom seemed quite a bit brighter than it had a minute ago. I'd just like a minute of your time if it's all the same to you, said a voice from behind him. Owen's body froze from disbelief, along with whatever it was that was actually frozen in us a few seconds ago. That was the Magister's voice. The Magister shouldn't even have a voice, because books don't have voices, unless they're audiobooks. And really, that wasn't the character's voice so much as the person who read the audiobook. And yet, there it was in Owen's house, all polite and magical and magistery. I apologize for such treatment, said the Magister, and Owen's legs turned the rest of him around like some kind of puppet. There, behind him, was a doorway made of brightness, lighting his entire room. And inside the doorway stood a fictional character. Uh, this must be a mistake, right? Sure, the Magister existed in the book, but this was the real, actual, non-fictional world. Wasn't it? The magician raised a hand and Owen's body jerked forward, walking like some kind of zombie toward the doorway. It's just that you disappeared in such a hurry, the Magister said, beckoning Owen forward with one finger. And after rallying up my curiosity in such a way, we can't have that now, can we? I promise this won't hurt a bit. He frowned. Well, I shouldn't think, at least. Well, that didn't bode well. Owen tried to shout again for Bethany, hoping she'd hear and rush back upstairs to shut down his doorway made of light and save him, but his lips still wouldn't move. His legs kept jerking him forward, though, and soon he was just inches from the doorway. And that's when he saw the one thing in the world that would cheer him up. Are you taking on a new apprentice without asking me? Said a younger voice, and Keel Nomenfoot. Keel Nomenfoot stepped into view behind the Magister. Just like in the books, Keel was dressed in black pants, shirt, and cloak, the better for sneaking in and sabotaging Quantinarium Labs. A rope belt weighted down by pouches hung around his waist, and two different knife wands were holstered at his side like pistols. All in all, he looked like the coolest thing Owen had ever seen in his entire life. Ah, Keel, the Magister said. He gestured towards Owen. This is the boy who saved me from Dr. Verity, and somehow knew I would need saving. You fought Dr. Verity? Keel Nomenfoot. The actual, real, live, sort of, Keel Nomenfoot, said to Owen. With what? He grinned. I'm just kidding. Nice job, buddy. I owe you one. Doesn't matter when or where, you just tell me what you want done. The more dangerous, the better. In fact, if it's world being destroyed dangerous, that's the most fun. So really, you'd be doing me a favor. His grin widened, and he winked. Owen fanboy giggled in response. Only since he couldn't move, it came out like a weird moaning ghost. Keel winked! That was just so Keel! Keel's grin faded and gave Owen an odd look, then turned to the Magister. So, the Seven Keys location is in the original computer. You know how much I hate going into Quantinarium. That will uh, have to wait for just a moment, Apprentice. This might be of greater importance. But even if you capture Dr. Verity, there's an infinite army of science soldiers waiting in orbit around Magisteria, ready to attack. We still have to shut them down. And all the magic users were they were arrested. I need to free them. 
if this child knows of Dr. Verity's plans, we might do well to find out how that is possible before you run off again, the old man said, flashing a patient smile at Keel. Something already worries me. Do you see what I see through the portal? Keel squinted past Owen. Someone doesn't know how to hang up his clothes? The magister shook his head. The world this boy comes from has no magic, none at all. We could be looking at another alternate reality where magic was truly destroyed. It's even possible that this boy knows of Dr. Verity's plan because, in some manner, Dr. Verity exists there as well. Uh-oh, that didn't bode well either. No, Dr. Verity, Owen tried to shout. No, Dr. Verity, magic wasn't destroyed and just never existed. None of that got said, of course, just a lot more moaning. He says magic never existed there, Keel translated, then paused. You know, I've seen alternate worlds, desolate futures, and the nothingness beyond the end of the universe, but I've never seen anything like that room. He shook his head. It just screams boring. You have to feel bad for whoever grew up there. Ah, appearances might deceive, the Magister said. Look closer. This boy and another, a girl, mentioned a book while they were here. Take a look at those books on the shelves. The Magister gestured and several books popped off Owen's shelf and began flipping their pages. There's magic in their histories, Keel. Magic everywhere. Schools of magics, wardrobes leading to magic lands. Gods and monsters, impossible things. And yet, that magic no longer exists in their world. How would that have happened? Keel frowned. Let him talk. Maybe he knows why. Maybe he even knows how to help. He turned to Owen. You do want to help, don't you? You saved my master here. I bet you want to learn magic and become amazing and do impossible things, yeah? Of course you do. Everyone does. That's all science people are. Just jealous of magic. Want me to teach you some right now? Owen's eyes widened and tried to knock vigorously. Tried and failed. Answers it shall be, the Magister said. If you wouldn't mind, my boy, just a short trip back to my study. Let's keep it as short as we can, Keel said. I still have to find the seventh key. Owen's feet picked up off the floor and walked him into the shining doorway, then over to the wall in the now familiar Magister's tower. There, his uncontrollable hands reached down and fastened chains to his ankles, then to each wrist. The chains magically tightened, making sure he wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Just for your own safety, the Magister said, giving a friendly wink. This really, really wasn't boding well. The Magister murmured something, and suddenly Owen was free to speak, move, and to escape. Unfortunately, the chains kept him from doing two of those things, so he went for the third. You're making a big mistake, he shouted. There's no magic in my world. Those books are just made-up stories, you know, for entertainment. We love magic so much that we tell each other stories about it, like we wish we could do it. That's it. Trust me, if any of us could, we'd be magicians in a minute. The Magister watched Owen for a moment as Keel made, see, gestures with his hand, fidgeting from foot to foot clearly anxious to get on with his quest-slash-book series. But the Magister ignored his apprentice. Instead, he whispered something else, and a weird sort of fog slid into Owen's brain. Now, the magician said, his voice low and commanding, tell me again how there is no magic in your world. There isn't, Owen said, meaning to repeat exactly what he had just said. One of the strange fog didn't want him to. And for some reason, the fog seemed to be in control of his mouth now. Just in fictional stories, like you, you're made up. You don't really exist. None of this is real. It's all just the product of someone's imagination, a writer, an author. His name is Jonathan Porterhouse. He made you all up. You, you don't really exist. All this? Your whole war with Dr. Verity? Made up. It's not real. There's no such thing as magic. Never was. You're just a bunch of words on a page, and the only reason I'm here is because my friend Bethany, well, not really my friend because I annoyed her, she brought me here because she does that kind of thing. Wait, what? 